listening to Kevin Teaches Music. Real quick, if you haven't already checked out my Patreon site, where I have a lot of great material on tune playing, accompaniment, music theory, and more, uh, two videos every month, check that out. That's patreon.com slash Kevin Elam Music. So today's lesson is for the whistle players and the flute players and anyone that's interested, but it's geared towards the whistle players. And today we are looking at different pitches of whistles and why we use those different pitched whistles and how to understand the, the ways that they uh, transpose and the keys that they play in and um, the situations that you want to use those different whistles in. So um, over here uh, to my right, I don't know if you can see this, but I have a gigantic pile of about 30 whistles and flutes, and I've got a couple sitting here in front of me. I'm not going to play every single one, but I am going to demo a few different uh, sizes or pitches and talk about what those are used for. So um, if you play whistle already, you probably have already heard people talking about a D whistle, a C whistle, an F whistle, these different pitches. And just to um, clear up that nomenclature, the name uh, that we give to a particular whistle, so for example, D whistle, refers to the lowest tone of that whistle. So let's get a standard D whistle out of the pile here. Whoa, that looks standard enough. So this is your cl so-called classic penny whistle, which is the D whistle, the high D, you know, soprano D. And that means that when I hold down all my fingers and the air is forced to go through the entire tube because I'm closing up all the holes, that means that that full length is resonating and that um, because this is a D whistle will produce a D. Now, which D is it? Well, if, if you're curious on the piano, it's actually not the D right by middle C, which you might be inclined to think. Um, the lowest D on the high D tin whistle is actually D5, which one, two, three, four, five, if I count from the left, it's, it's that soprano D, not the super high soprano D, but it's like the middle soprano D um, that's basically at the upper end of like an alto voice range. That's the bottom note of this. So a whistle of, of these little guys, these classic whistles, these high D whistles are actually quite high in pitch. They're a full octave higher than the traditional flute. But it's interesting because the timbre, because of the way the instrument's constructed, it doesn't sound that high, does it? In some ways that might sound higher than this, but it's the same note. So, some of you might know that whistles are mostly diatonic, and diatonic is a word that means, that refers to a collection of notes that are in a particular key. So, um, a key consists of seven pitches that correspond to the letter names A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. They might be sharp or flat, but you're going to have one for each letter name and you're not going to have multiple, uh, so you wouldn't have A and A flat, for example. You would only have one pitch for each letter name. So a key is a collection of seven pitches that repeat in each octave, but importantly, there's only one note for each letter name. And so that collection of pitches is said to be diatonic, as opposed to a chromatic collection, which would have multiple... A chromatic collection would have multiple pitches for each letter name. So you might have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, etc. Hence the chromatic scale. But anyway, whistles are mostly diatonic, which means that as I lift my fingers, I am not getting every single note on the piano. Rather, I'm getting um, the notes from a scale on the piano. So if I play...
just lifting fingers one by one, as I'm sure you all know how to do if you play whistle. I'm getting this D major scale on the piano, but I'm not getting every single tone. I'm getting a selection of tones, one for each letter name. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So what that means, this is this, I promise there, this is going somewhere. That means that any one whistle can only play in a couple of keys. Now, it's not just one key because, well, we have that native key of D. We also have a couple of cross fingerings, like we can do a C natural instead of a C sharp. So, or, so it, we have those two available to us. So if this is going a little fast for, for some folks, don't worry, I can do a whole other video. Another's not actually a word. I can do an, another entire video about key signatures and modes and sharps and flats and all that stuff. But for now, just suffice it to say that the whistle here can play either a C sharp or a C natural. So that allows us to play in either the key of D or the key of G. Furthermore, there are related modes to each of those two. For example, D major is related to B minor. They have the same key signature. So you can right off the bat play in D major, B minor, and then G major and its relative E minor. And then there are a couple of other modes that in a similar way are related to those major keys of D and G. Uh, for example, you could do like an E Dorian, you could do an A Dorian, and those are just different um, different uh, sh scale shapes um, that we can talk about in another video. But all things considered, any one whistle without the usage of, you know, crazy difficult techniques is going to be able to play in two to three major keys and, you know, two to three minor keys and then a couple of assorted modes. And that's going to actually get you through a lot of Irish repertoire, which is why this D whistle is so useful. So if you have to bring one instrument to a session, bring your D whistle. But for tunes that are outside that range of keys, we start to look around for other options. And that's where the other pitches come in. So let's just say that I wanted to play a tune that is in F major. Let's say I have a fiddle player who's very accomplished and can play in F major. And this fiddle player wants to play the tune Black Pats by Tommy Peoples. And that tune is in session sometimes played in G, but the original composition is actually in F. So let's say you have a fiddle player that wants to play it in F but you've learned it in G on your D whistle. You've learned it like this. Okay. Now you could try to play it in F on this whistle. The problem is that this whistle natively has an F sharp on this tone and it doesn't have an F. See, this is E. This is F sharp, there is no F natural. The only way you could do it is by starting from the E and sort of pulling your finger halfway off the hole to try to get the middle of, the, of those two. There's that note. But it's almost impossible to hit that type of note in a fast sequence. It's easy enough to slide into it, So I could do an attempt. Uh, but every time I get to that, it's going to naturally be a little wobbly because that note is not natively on its whistle. But what if I had a whistle that was exactly one tone lower than this one? Well, as it so happens, ta-da! I do have multiple of that exact thing. This is called a C whistle. What that means, like I explained before, that the lowest note is now C instead of D. So it's exactly one whole tone lower. And that means that if I am fingering 
what feels like a G to me, right, in the sense that on this D whistle it was a G over here, and if I just pick this up and just imagine that it's a D whistle, even though it's not, then this would be a G. So if I just close my eyes and pretend this is a D whistle and start playing a G, a G in quotation marks, it'll actually be an F because it's sounding a whole step lower than this one. You can see it's longer. Longer tubes produce lower notes. So that means that if I've learned it, the tune in G here, I simply pick up my whistle that sounds a whole step lower and I play the tune exactly the same way in terms of the fingering, and it'll magically sound an F. <laughs> well, this whistle's not quite in tune. Here's a more uh, professional grade C whistle right here. Let's see if I can get this puppy in tune. There it is. So now, by having an additional instrument handy, I'm able to play a tune in multiple different keys without actually having to think about it in a new key. I'm still thinking of it in G. So when I play on this whistle, I'm actually thinking G, B, E, D, G, B, A. Well, I'm not thinking of all the letter names, but you get what I'm saying. I'm thinking in the key of G, but it's sounding in the key of F. That's the same principle uh, behind um, so, or, uh, band and orchestral instruments like E flat alto saxophone or a B flat trumpet or an A clarinet, same exact principle. So that is why we have these different whistles, right? So what's another example? So I've showed you the D and the C. Um, oh, here's a nice one. Well, this one I've had to tape up a little bit up by the mouthpiece, but this is um, an E flat whistle. Let's see if I can show you the comparison here. So the one with the red tip is the D whistle. You can see it's slightly longer there. And then the black tip one is E flat. So E flat is one half step higher than D. So it's going to be slightly shorter. Now, why would you want this whistle? Well, traditionally, this, this key is not very common in Irish music, but nowadays you do have, you do encounter some sessions where people have tuned up a half step. The, some of the guitar and bazooki people will have capos on and the fiddles will be tuned up. And the, if there are any flutes and pipes present, well, they have to be in a higher key. So oftentimes people will do that because they don't want um, newcomers to join. But if you're bold enough to, to jump in, grab your E flat whistle if they're playing up a half step. So let's say they're playing Let's say they're playing Bucks of Orenmore, but up a half step. So. And you show up with your uh, D whistle, you know, they're here, and you go. Ooh, yeah, it clashes right away. You know you're not in the right key. Put that away. Pull out your E flat, see if, see if they're in that key. Well, it's a little sharp. And you're off to the races. And so that brings me to a sort of a theoretical uh, point I wanted to make. There's two broad ways that you can use these whistles in, in different keys. One of them is to use a whistle that's in a you know different or exotic key in order to play a composition that itself is supposed to be in that weird key. So for example, our, 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 our first discussion was about black pats. That tune is supposed to be an F. So I can grab this C whistle and play black pats in F, which is the intended key, by thinking of it in G, but on the C whistle, which sounds a whole step lower than the D whistle, which is the default. So in that sense, I'm playing the intended key of a composition um, with a different whistle, which is making my life easier than trying to half hole and do all that weird technique stuff on the D whistle. The other type of strategy 
is you can simply play a normal tune that it was originally supposed to be in D or A or E or whatever normal key, you can simply play it on another whistle. Now, meaning with the same finger pattern. What that will do is it will be just be in a different key. And other musicians, if they don't know that, they will not be able to play along. So that's what's happening with that E flat session that I described, that sort of theoretical um, encounter. Those musicians are playing in E flat tunes that were that were really supposed to be in D, but they're just playing them in E flat. But if everyone's doing that at the same time, then it doesn't matter, right? So it's kind of similar to what happens with um, historical pitch. Um, like, for example, in the Baroque era, the A wasn't necessarily 440 hertz. It was tuned to a wide variety of different pitches. And so in today's you know, historically informed Baroque ensembles, the pitch is somewhat lower than your, your typical pop uh, or classical recording. So it's the same kind of idea. You're playing a piece that's actually supposed to be in D just simply up or down a, a certain number of steps. That requires everyone who's playing to be in agreement about what's going on, right? And you, you might wonder, why do we do that? Well, kind of just for fun, honestly, kind of just because it's a nice sound. And it, it, it can be fun um, as things that are up in pitch sometimes have a little bit of a lift to them or certain ornaments might be a little crisper. People's strings are tighter. Um, it can be a little, you know, more energetic and fun. Or for the sort of opposite effect, you can play a tune on a lower pitched whistle. That can be really nice. So like here's an A whistle. So for comparison, here was my D and this is my A. If my math is right, the A should be four thirds as long as the D. Uh, I'll have to check that math later, but I think the ratio is four thirds. So this is a bit lower. So what if I played, um, what if I played, um, you know, how about a little bit of Lark in the morning on here? This whistle, I haven't really, haven't really gotten used to it yet, so. But, so what's happening there, I'm playing Lark in the morning in, my, my fingering is the same as I would normally play it. So I'm not doing anything differently. My fingering is the same. So that means that because it normally is in D on the D whistle, if I, if I still think of the fingering the same way, but I'm playing it on the A whistle, it'll be an A. Because if I keep the fingering the same, it'll sound it'll sound in whatever key the name of the whistle is. If if it was sounding in D on the D whistle, it'll sound in A on the A whistle. If, for example, a tune were in G on the D whistle, that's the fourth tone of that whistle. If I then pick this whistle up and finger the tune in quote, G, in other words, what my fingers think is G, that's the fourth tone of this whistle, which is not really a G. It's actually a D, A, B, C sharp, D. So let's see, what's a tune that would normally be in G? How about, um... little bit of Christmas Eve. So what's happening there, I'm playing Christmas Eve in a different key. So I'm not playing Christmas Eve in G. I'm thinking of it in G, but because this whistle's at a different pitch, it's sounding in D. Why would I want to do something like that? Well, the A whistle is really nice for playing Scottish music because bagpipes are in the key of A. So the bagpipes, their scale is quite similar to the scale that I would get on this A whistle. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, they have a G natural, and then an A. So for example, this whistle is really great for playing along with, with pipers, although 
there's a secondary concern, which is that pipe, pipes, Highland pipes are often actually significantly sharp, even of this pitch, which we can get into later. But if you have a piper, like a small piper or somebody playing border pipes, who's playing in concert pitch, that's just lovely. And then you can easily play along with the piping tune. So That tune might have been playable on the normal D whistle, but sometimes you'll find that it's easier to play on different whistles. So um, a couple other ones that I wanted to show you. Um, let's get a lower one going here. Ah, this is a really nice B flat whistle. Um, by the way, I really like these Tony Dixon plas black plastic whistles. They're very cheap, but the tone is incredible. So that reminds me of, of another usage. You can use different pitch whistles when you're accompanying singers who want to sing in different keys. It's very rare that a singer's range will naturally incline them to sing in the key signature of the um, D whistle. Where did my D whistle go? This is my D whistle. It's very rare that a singer's range will just magically land them in that exact range. Ah, here's a better D whistle. This is the little little brother of this one, right? So let's say I'm I'm also a singer. So let's say I'm doing hmm, I'm I'm gonna sing I am a jolly clown or no I once was a soldier. I want to sing that song. Now, if I try to I mean, I could sing it there, but let's say on this particular day, my voice is feeling a bit lower. I want to sing it here. Because it goes a little bit higher in, in, in the melody. If you've only brought your D whistle and the singer suddenly says, oh, I'd like to sing in B flat, well, you're out of luck. You can't play in B flat on a D whistle. But if you have your B flat whistle, what you do is... You don't have to think about B flat. You just pick this up and think in D, and it'll be B flat because of the nature of this whistle. Because the D that you're thinking of, which is this, is actually a B flat. So you can go. All of a sudden you're playing in B flat along with the singer. So thus far the the purposes that that I've sort of identified for these whistles are first of all you can use them to play a composition that's intended in a different key like black pats for example is supposed to be in the key of F so you grab your C whistle which is a whole tone lower and you think about the tune in G but it sounds in F. You can also use these differently pitched whistles to simply play tunes that are supposed to be in a quote normal key, but you can just play them in a different key, as long as all the musicians involved are on board with that idea. That's especially obviously applicable for solo playing, but it's quite simple if you're playing with just an accompanist because that person can usually move the capo to an appropriate part of their fretboard and then just play very you know, easy shapes. With a larger session, that's going to be less practical, but sometimes, like I said, you'll find sessions that are specifically in those higher or flat keys. You can also use this technique to play along with singers. This is, that, this is similar to the first idea, except that in this case, the song isn't necessarily written or composed in this key. It's simply being performed in that key for, for a reason, uh, the singer's range. But that's similar to the first idea. Um, and, and again, related, you can use different pitches to, of whistles to play along with instruments like um, bagpipes or other instruments that, 
you know, commonly play in different keys. And I wanted to uh, say one more thing. There are there are um, a lot of folks that have actually asked, not only me in person, but also on some of the forums that I follow. They've asked, "How do I start? How do I start learning tunes on my other whistles? Like, wh what do I do?" And I think what they're concerned about is, do I need to start thinking? Do I need to actually learn all the new, all the new letter names for the whole the the fingerings on that flute or whistle? So, for example, this is an E flat flute. Which means that that bottom tone is an E flat. Let me move these guys. Out of the way. Now, when I'm playing on this flute, do I need to sit there and practice? You know, thinking, okay, this is E flat. This is. F natural, this is G, this is A flat, this is B flat, this is C natural, this is D natural, this is E flat. Do I need to relearn all the notes, or can I just simply imagine that it's just like my D flute, which is here, which is actually in D. And the answer is that for the most part, I do not think of the new pitches, the what we would call the concert pitches. Concert pitch means the actual real pitch as opposed to the fingering that you're thinking of. I don't really think of those when I'm playing these other pitch instruments. So when I pick up my E flat flute and I start playing Bucks of Orin more, I'm not thinking B, you know. B flat G B B flat E flat C B flat G B flat C F F. No, I'm thinking A F sharp A D B A F sharp B E B E. Even though the concert pitch is actually the flat ones that I said earlier. Etc. Now, at the same time. You do need to know what those pitches are in order to communicate with other musicians what the heck you're doing. But you just don't need to think in that key as you play. It's probably going to be pretty challenging to try to think of these tunes in a million different keys. You probably want to just stick to the keys that you know best, like D, G, you know, E minor, A minor, whatever you've, whatever you've learned best on your D whistle. And then figure out before you pick up the flute or whistle what key you're trying to play in and the correct whistle to grab. And then once you launch into the tune, just figure out what key fingering-wise you need to be thinking of and then just orient your brain that way. So to wrap up the video, I want to give a few examples of how this would work. So, so we'll kind of do like a little problem-solving puzzle game, I suppose. All right, first one is, let's say we're in a concert and we have all of these flutes and whistles. I have flutes in every imaginable key, except I don't think I have F sharp and I don't have A flat, but I have every other key. So to wrap up the video, let's do a little problem solving game. We'll imagine that we're in a concert and we have all these flutes and whistles available. I have, I have instruments in low C, low D, low E flat, low E, F, G. I don't have F sharp or G sharp, but I do have A, B flat. I have one that's kind of in B. It's a little flat though. And then I have a bunch of C's, a bunch of D's, E flats, E's, and I even have two high F whistles. They're really cute. These little guys. Look at these little things. Isn't that adorable? So let's play a little problem solving game. Okay, first scenario. I'm in a concert and a fiddle player wants to play Maud Miller's. In the key of F. 
why they're doing this, I don't know. They've, they, that's the setting they learned, or they're just wanting to be quirky or whatever. But in any case, the fiddler wants to play Mod Millers in F. Now I think to myself, what key do I usually play Mod Millers in? Well, let's check. That's the tonic of the tune. Now this happens to be an E flat flute, but let's ignore that for now. So the tonic of this of this tune is G. How do you know that? Mm. It's often the tune. It's often the note at the end of the tune. You can. We'll have to do another video on that. But you look at the key signature and you look at the sort of note that the melody returns to at the ends of phrases. So. That's the tonic. So that's a G, at least fingering wise, right? So we know the tune is supposed to be in G. Now this person wants to play it in F. From G to F, that's down in pitch. Okay, so we know that we need to be grabbing a whistle that's gonna sound lower because instead of being in G, it needs to be in F. What's that differential? It's one whole step. Do we have a whistle that is one whole step lower than the normal whistle. The normal whistle is in D. The whistle that is one whole step lower is the C whistle because C is one whole step lower than D. So the tune that was in G on the D whistle, G being the fourth tone of that D scale, will then sound on in F on the C whistle because F is the fourth tone of that scale if we use the same fingering. So I pick up my C whistle, and I give it a try. <laughs> Without hitting my fingers together like that. Let's check it against the piano. A little out of tune. Push the tuning slide in. There it is. I'm thinking of the tune in G, but because this is a whole step lower, it's sounding in F. Now, is it bad or a problem to think of the tune in F once you pick up this whistle? No, but I think you'll just get your brain a little, a little tied in a knot at first. I would, so you know that it's in F on paper, but once you pick up the whistle, just let yourself think of it in G. Right? It's usually just easier for everyone involved. Don't torture your brain over thinking F E D C A G B. It's it's just too hard. You're 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 reinventing the wheel. Just play the tune exactly the same way you normally do, and it'll be an F. Okay, let's do um let's do another scenario. Okay, next scenario is let's see. You are playing with Highland Pipers. They're they are, um, they've informed you that their A, in quotation marks, is concert B flat. Now, this might seem silly, but this is a real thing that happens. <laughs> Highland Pipers, and this is actually the, the, the best case scenario. Typically, their A is actually north of B flat. It's closer to B, but it's not either one. So in this sort of nicer scenario their a they're telling you is concert b flat and they want to play um what do they want to play they want to play um amazing grace okay so they're going to play amazing grace now now if you what you're going to do is you're going to ask the pipers, hey, what key are you playing Amazing Grace in? And they're going to say D. Now, the thing is, there, as we know, that's not really going to be D because their A isn't actually A. So if their A is B flat, which they've told us, then their D is going to be E flat because it's going to be up a, a half step just like the A was. So... Because of the way the Highland Pipes are constructed, they're going to play, even though the pipe is in A nominally, they're going to play it in D because of the range of the melody of this tune. Because they need to go, da na Because that tonic of Amazing Grace is not the bottom note of the scale. Or sorry, the tonic is not the lowest note of the melody. So we they can't play it in A because they don't have the notes below that. So that means they need to go A, D... 
but like we know, it's actually E flat. So what do I do? Well, I have a couple of options. If I need to play a tune in actual E flat, I can either use my E flat flute, and I will be thinking in D, right? Because the D fingering on the E flat flute is actually E flat. So if I want to play an E flat on the E flat flute, I just think in D. So that would be starting, the, the Amazing Grace melody would start on the note A, because like I said, it's da na. So, That's one strategy. Now, if I, for whatever reason, don't have that E flat flute, I can also accomplish this thing on a B flat whistle or flute. So I grab my B flat. Now, we're supposed to be playing the tune in E flat. E flat is the fourth tone of the B flat scale. So this is my B flat whistle. This is a B flat. Then I go one, two, three, four. This note should be an E flat because it's a fourth up from the low tone of the whistle. So if this is my tonic, then the tune will start da -na, because it goes from the sol to the do. That will most cl closely mirror the fingerings that the Pi Highland Pipers will be using. They're going to be going da -na, na na na. I don't really know Highland Pipe fingerings, but I know that they do something like that. So. Let's see if that matches the pitch. Sorry. What key am I thinking of in my head? I'm thinking of the key of G. Okay, so in order to play in concert E flat, I can pick up a B flat whistle which sounds two whole steps lower than the D whistle, or a major third. So, D whistle, B flat whistle. The black one, the B flat, is a major third lower than the D. So if I want to sound a tune in E flat, I can pick up this whistle that sounds a major third lower, think in G, but if I play the so-called G on this whistle, it's actually an E flat because E flat is a major third lower than G. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the same finger on both whistles and blowing the same pattern. You can hear that difference of a major third. Kind of a weird sound, isn't it? So as you can see, there's sometimes multiple ways to solve the same problem. Because we also could play that same melody on the E flat flute, but we thought of it in D, which is the same key that the Highland Pipers are thinking of, but it's not the same fingering, right? So there's just, it, it's just really like a puzzle. It's kind of like a little logic puzzle. You have to understand how keys and intervals work, and you have to understand what the name of your instruments means. So remember, the name of the instrument means that's the lowest tone that it plays, okay? And then you can figure out from there, if you know your scales, you can figure out what any individual note on that instrument is. So if this is an E-flat flute, then this is E-flat, this is F, this is G, this is A-flat, B-flat, C, etc. So that's an A-flat, right? Okay, so we've done a couple of examples. I've gone through um, all the different strategies and ways that you could use these flutes and whistles. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I know this can be kind of a complicated topic and it's like kind of music theory intense, but if you just, you know, try some of this stuff out, especially with the piano so you can sort of you can sort of see in real time what you're doing or hear, you know.
pick up your whistles and play different notes and see what matches what. I think you'll start to understand the way this is laid out um, pretty quickly. And then just experience will help you solve these problems that the, like the ones I just mentioned on the fly quicker. You'll get used to, oh, okay, E flat, I know what whistle to grab. Okay, key of F, I know to grab my C whistle. Somebody's playing in E major, I know to grab my A whistle and play in A. Or somebody's playing in, you know, C major, I know I can grab my C whistle and play in D. Somebody's playing in F, but it's a tune that sits nicely in a D fingering. I grab my F whistle. So, with a little experimenting and, and some practice and exposure, um, you, can, you can definitely become familiar with all these techniques. And I will close by saying, none of this has anything to do with how good of a whistle or flute player that you are. You can become the greatest flute or whistle player in the world playing only on a D instrument. And if you have to pick one instrument to bring, always bring your D instrument, because that's the classic historic one that's going to get you through the sessions and you know, the vast majority of the repertoire. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, check out patreon.com slash Kevin Elon Music. And happy practicing, and I will see you all next time.